name is Chef Yves Deschain, and today we're in the Greener Village's Learning Kitchen with Fatou Sador, owner of Food by Fatou. Welcome, Fatou. Thank you for having me, Yves. Uh, Fatou, uh, you, uh, we met uh, while you were working at the Northside Creators Market in, in the stall doing some wonderful uh, Senegalese food. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Uh, what brings you to Canada and uh, a little bit about your history? I met it to my husband, Randy Sador, and uh, that brings me in Canada. We met in Africa, and then uh, after we met, it took me a year before I come to Canada. So Fatou, how long have you been here in Canada? I come in Canada 2009, live in Ontario for five years, and then moved to Fredericton. And well, Fredericton is so happy to have you. I'm glad to be here because I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. what made you start thinking about making food for others? What made me thinking about making food was is about my friend, um, who's a Jamaican. We always exchange food together, and then she said to me, Oh, Fatou, we're having the Garrison Market Night Market. Are you want to be a part of it, sharing um, what you do? And I'm like, that would be nice. Uh, that was 2018, okay. and then we, we did it together. And uh, since then, it's wonderful. You're no longer at the north side, but we can find you at, this, at the Boys Market. Yeah, I'm at the Boys Market, and it's like we are behind, I call Memory Land. That's where we, they have it, uh, because behind the, 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 the people who sell the egg, we used to be behind them. Yep. And uh, this is where you can find Food by Far too. I'm, I'm operating there Saturday, 7 to, to 1. What kind of food do you make, Fatou? I'm making Senegalese food and then some Canadianized food because, um, like, uh, I make jollof rice, I make puleyasa, I make uh, special rice, the Senegal special rice. That's the that's the my favorite one okay. because the, that one is like one we use when we do weddings, okay. you know, things like that. We put lots of decoration and it comes with olive sauce. Those are my 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 main dish and then i have ragu i made many s different stuff and then i have my appetizer too that if people have a wedding or a party they can order that is a platter already done to go and i have different uh, different type of food in it and it's a look um, is a it's fantastic that, perfect that was leading into my next question yeah. i mean you're if you don't have time to go to the market, do you offer your services? Do you do catering? Do you do a skip the dishes type yeah, meal? Yeah, I'm not in the skip the dishes yet, but I do uh, take out like family meal Friday. People can order and then pick it up at my kitchen. It's like um, uh, where I'm located is like um, 30 Mackenzie Road. This is where people do can do their pickup or they can do delivery too because that's the, the part of um, my business. I, I cook and then uh, I, people can do or order any time they want, definitely for the appetizer, because Christmas is coming and it's going to be like an awesome thing to have when you're having a party. So were you always going to be a chef or did you kind of fall in? I know that your friend asked you, but was this always a passion of yours, cooking? Yeah, I was cooking at home because how do I make my husband? It was like um, I was uh, managing um, this apartment building and I was cooking for people, European who come there. Okay. And then some of them was generals and like, you know, high end people like uh, work with, with United Nations. And they really love what I'm cooking. Sometimes they will move me to take me to the city to cook for like um, a big group of people. And uh, I just to love it. And because of uh, always helping my mom on the side, and then, uh, but what I do before was like bar, you know, I do bartender, that's okay. something I learned. But cooking is falling to my, my patient, but patience, and, um, that's, that's what is about it. And I learned it at home with my mom growing up helping. So you didn't go to school, this is no, just kind of a, a home cooking? Yeah, home cooking, and then as, as, I, as I learned, my mom was a, a chef in a okay. hotel, he worked in a hotel, and then she was, she was cooking this type of food I'm making today, by the way, for these European who come. She will go once a week and then make it for them. It's like, can be like 100 people, 200 people, and they all like uh, enjoy the food. And she will go all the time there to, to our, uh, our home hotel. It's like five-star hotel, and this is where she was cooking. And home is where? W my home is uh, Somon. It's called, uh, I, I'm from Senegal, and I live in a town called Somon. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very good. So your mother just used to make this lovely comfort food yeah. that people would enjoy and introduce yeah. them? Yeah, and introduce them. And, 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 and to be honest, when we have a big ceremony, thousands of people, they call her. She's the one making all the ingredients and tell people what to do. And she's measuring everything perfectly. I don't know how she did it, but she always do it right. <laughs> so your mother used to be called in, so she was 
must have been a famous chef in Senegal if she was if, if she was called to do all these important things and would she do these by herself or did she have a special team that would come with her my mom I can I can call her a chef I can call her like a, a community lady because she was a very um, successful woman everybody know her even like uh, one time I remember she was in Canada and uh, this woman have um, a wedding for her daughter and there's like it's a big deal there and she called my mom asked how many people how much food I gonna have to to serve this type of people my mom just to take it say it on the top of her head and I'm like how do you do that but she will share it with people everybody she will tell what's one what to do and like that, n everybody gonna be eating, have a comfort food, and then drinks and everything. She organized all of those. I don't know how do she did it, but it was something that I guess that she have the love for it, and uh, it always work. Well, that's wonderful. So today, uh, you're going to share a dish with us. Uh, what's it called? This 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 called chep, and we gonna uh, uh, gonna call it chebu genar. It's like um, jollof rice with chicken because that's the name they know it here. We'll be right back with Fatu making us some check right after these messages. Welcome back to Easy Eats with Chef Eve here in the Learning Kitchen with Fatu. Fatu, uh, how do we go about making this lovely jollof rice? Okay, the jollof rice, I'm gonna start it with uh, putting the, the oil. Okay. Uh, then I put the heat on, and I'm now I'm gonna add the oil. I don't measure things though. In my world, no measurement happening, but it will taste amazing. Well, then I will do the pay-by-play <laughs> thing for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna add um, maybe four spoon of oil. I can try to say. We're looking then at about a quarter cup here. Quarter, so yeah, a quarter cup. You see, you right on. <laughs> 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 and uh, I let that heat up. Okay. And as I pick up these ingredients and make my nokos, we call it like a stuffing for the chicken. So nokos, a, a stuffing, cool. Yeah, this is my porcelli, and I have pour some porcelli and then cilantro and green f and, and some bell peppers. And I have a few garlic. Let's see how many cilantro I have because I love the smell of the, the cilantro. As this thing is heating up, I gotta cut half an onion. So when you're making jollof rice, this recipe, is this uh, a, a tried and true, or could you kind of use your imagination, like you were saying, and add uh, no, different things? This jollof rice I make here is uh, the one we type of do home. Not, not much different, we're just adding more okay. vegetable. We have uh, cabbage, we have uh, carrot, we have uh, um, like, um, all kind of veget vegetarian inside of, of the, um, you see I make a hole first. Okay, uh, yeah. For, um, for the chicken to, then I can. And it's not a big hole, it's just a little. No, a, it's just a, a, a tiny one, it's a tiny one. Even, you, even when I cook it, it will close off uh, themselves. Then you don't even know that it was there until you started eating it, then you know that. What was that, you know? Oh, so it's like a little surprise. Yeah, it's kind of like a surprise. I'm, I want to add some onion, sorry about, uh, some salt. I'm going to pick this and then you can see I'm going to add it here in the hole as my oil is getting hot. What we do is like um, for us, anything that can, can get us spice, right, and, uh, and taste amazing, we do that because usually when I was a little girl, I didn't like doing helping for cooking, but I like to do the knockers because as we pick up parcel and par parcel, I think they call it, um, those, uh, those things around it, um, it's like a morche. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one we use. And oh, we a mortar and pestle. Yeah, and you would mo yeah, and then we make, um, we make uh, this, this, this knockers. Like okay, cool. Yeah. Now, I think I always feel my, my hand Absolutely, like and that's a great tip too. You to don't want to, uh, yeah. you want to make sure that it's hot enough. Yeah, it's hot enough to, to pick what I'm what I'm doing now I can pick up my chicken as I have it here and uh, just to put it in you just a shallow fry yeah nice it's like to have the mind of his own yeah that's chicken chicken likes to jump everywhere 
and I'm adding salt in it. Yep. Some black pepper, and then I will close it off a bit. As I'm having my vegetable here, I'm gonna have carrots. I already uh, cut off the carrots and, and, uh, and clean it up. Then that's w that way it's not like uh, taking me too much time. If you're rushing here, because people don't have time. Over there we cook and talk and yapping all day, you know, and as we simmer the food. Here, time count. And it's a very filling dish because if you have a family, we use lots about rice back home because rice and, and pasta is something that can fill a lot of family. And it's and also and inexpensive. It's, it's, and it's less expensive that you can make something amazing and inexpensive and everybody gathering and sit in a table. So we're just getting a good crisp brown on the chicken with yeah, the oil? Yeah, and then what I'm, what I'm doing now is like, uh, um, I'm gonna add that in. You can smell that it's starting already smelling very good. I'm gonna add the tomato paste. Okay, add the tomato paste right away, so. Yeah, I'm adding the tomato paste. I don't know how much is that, don't ask me. I don't, don't really <laughs> know. Yeah, you don't <laughs> measure, so. I don't measure, but I guess. She's probably got about three tablespoons in there, roughly, so yeah. half the can of tomato paste if you're buying a small can. And yeah, and then this is um, um, like It's like a, a sambal yeah. almost. And that's, I'm gonna add that into here, a kind of like this amount. And Don't you make a pepper sauce like this? I, my sauce is different than is that it? one, okay. yeah. Mine is spicy. Everybody cook it different too. They have like the, the Nigerian jollof rice. It's kind of similar to Senegalese jollof rice, but our have more veg veg vegetable. We put okra, we put uh, all kind of things in the bowl, and it's like a, a very nice, uh, flavorful, you know, healthy. You can see like how do it's starting to. So you're really frying up that paste yeah, in there, yeah? Yeah, getting to like inside the chicken, and because that's very a part that important. Anyway, here I'm gonna add a little bit of this thing here, Absolutely. a little bit to make it like a. The rest of it will go later before the rice. Oh, wonderful! So just a little bit of a garnish. Yeah. So that's something else. So is uh, you said that this is halal um, in Senegal? Is that uh, mostly how most people eat? Is is halal? Yeah, because everything is like I said in Senegal. Everything is kind of like uh, local made by okay. and grow, and this is why everything is fresh. And then we we buy go. We know that this is all halal. And right now I'm gonna add because you see usually I should add water because I'm. Um, I'm rushing a bit for like uh, people who don't have time. I can add the carrots. And the cabbage, yeah. The cabbage, because you know what? It's just to something that is easy and quick to make. If I was cooking at home as my family, we will be cooking it slower and small time. Okay, cool, so you're creating a broth yeah. essentially to cook your rice yeah and then you just add everything together yeah oh that's an interesting way to do a, a one pot and yeah th that's great yeah and now I'm gonna let this cook and um, hopefully the cabbage is gonna grab soon this is why usually if you're rushing here you don't have time you don't have to add the carrot or, or thing okay if you make it something fun you can just do could you yeah. add frozen vegetables could I add peas to this or uh, beans like I say you know what jollof rice is something that you can do it your own way perfect so we're gonna let this chicken simmer for a little bit yeah and then when it's done we'll come right back and show you how to finish off this jollof rice <laughs> Welcome back to Easy Eats. Again, we're in the Greener Village's Learning Kitchen with Fatu, and we're going to uh, make the rice part of the uh, jollof rice. Yeah. So. Now I'm checking out my stuff. It looks like it's very cooked now, the, the, the chicken and then some veggie I put in there. The carrot, I'm going to leave it to okay. cook it with, uh, with the rice. That's not a big deal. But I'm going to move the cabbage, you can see. So do you have to do this? Or can you just add your rice to it if you'd like? People can do whatever they want. Okay. Because it's like, it's no rule, I think. 
I guess these two, I'm gonna leave them for a few minutes. And okay. then I, I add a little bit of sauce here. And uh, I will use your spicy here because it looks fantastic to me. You say it's spicy. Well, that's it. We grew peppers yeah. in the garden and then I, s I smoked them, then I dried them. That looked amazing. I don't know how hot it is, but hey. Oh, well, we'll find out, won't we? <laughs> we will, I'm pretty sure. Now, I love to, t to try this way to see if everything is, mm, yeah, is getting there. It's nice. Now I'm going to cool it off, and as I kill in my rice, then I can take those piece of chicken, and then I add the rice. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay, and so you're washing the rice, and tell us why you're washing the rice, or why it's important to wash rice. I think because of the, ri the way the rice come. Starch? Yeah. We have to clean that off. And then make sure that the rice is clean. The way yeah. it comes in, sometimes you buy it in bulk yeah. and it's sitting in those bins. Yeah. So, yeah, it's yeah. important to wash any kind of, yeah. there may be pebbles or any kind of dirt in there. Here I can say the rice are not, it's, it's nice the way they, they come, the, the jasmine rice, because you don't have much to do with it. I can now add my rice, you see, and... Look at that, it's like gonna be fantastic. Yeah. Perfect. Now we can, I can put uh, the heat a bit, not much, because I don't want it to burn. Okay, yeah. Now we let it cook and hopefully it's come, gonna come very well. When you're cooking, the cabbage suck up all the juices or whatever you're making it, then have, take that flavor and then that's why it's amazing. It does absorb that flavor. So if you're making cabbage rolls or if you're making soup, yeah. it's a nice filler. It fills and uh, exactly. And, and the price is right. So if you're looking or if you're on a lower budget, uh, cabbage and carrots are definitely a yeah, good. Yeah, and it's amazing how, how, it, how it, it tastes, you know. With this dish, it's amazing how you can do with all type of rice, what flavor that rice can give you and how different quality are they are, you know, all together. We have a town there that we grow our, wi uh, our wild rice. Yeah. And when that rice come, the color is not like very pure white. And I always wonder, why is that color? Because it's all organic. No bleach. Yeah, no, no bleach. And then the rice come kind of like, um, they, I, I will call it like kind of like a little bit creamy. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's amazing when you cook that rice and the taste of it. I'm like, whoa, that's like a, have a strong taste. You're, you're getting all these nice red rices, black rices, your wow, wild rice, a, uh, uh, long grain jasmine. That wasn't something that we dealt with when I was when I was a younger fella. And, 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 and that's, that's what I was saying to my husband the other day. I say, you know what amazing about like uh, to, to Canada, I think is like all these things you can find in a tiny corner of like a town you can be like to, to Japan you can go to find the Japanese food you can be to Korea all these things is a tiny community is amazing how food can take you to places without you going there and the experience of it all you know but I cannot turn it right now because if I turn it I will have some part that cook and order doesn't get cooked this is why I'm lifting it slowly gotcha and then the all the things can come together so it's not just a leave it cook and leave it alone. You you go in every once in a while and just kind of fluff it and as it's yeah. going. Yeah. Okay. To make the the juice go under, then the one down the bottom is like sticking. Maybe they're not really cooked, okay. and then the water will go under. That will do the job done. When you're turning it, and it's like all like a nice and done. Then you wait on a bed, and then the other part to take over. I'm ah. sure that this brings back nice memories yeah. when you eat it, when you cook it. And when that's I cook it, yeah. And that's and what food is, too. It's yeah. all about bringing memories. I know cooking with my grandmother uh, wa uh, was always nice memories, and that's yeah. I did exactly like you. I like to play, but when it came time to cook, I was always in yeah. the kitchen poking or asking to taste. Yeah. Now I'm going to add a little bit of the black pepper because usually I have my black pepper seed but I'm gonna add a tiny bit and uh, some of your thing in there on the top on before the top. I turn it. Okay. And that will give the zing. Will give it the zing, yeah. <laughs> I always like my little zing on my food. That will add into up the color of it. Oh, perfect. And then the next things, the next step is I'm flipping it, the, the rice, and then wait maybe for five more minutes and then it's gonna be done. Oh, wonderful. And ready to apply the platter. So it is a simple and easy dish. It may take a little bit of time, but essentially it's just... Yeah. If you don't, like you say, if you don't want to add any of these, 
and you want to put oil in the pan, you don't. You can add your vegetable, like you say, and you can you can saute it everything in a pot and then pour it in your ri um, your pressure cooker, and then you can do it that way and see what you get. That's the experience. Somebody can do that and take me and in Instagram and tell me mm -hmm. what how do things go. Okay, because that will be interesting to to try. Could you turn this from leftovers? I always like to find a way to kind of use up my leftovers. So if you roasted a whole chicken, could you make your jollof rice and instead of cooking the chicken in the pot, just kind of use of course, the, the chicken of from the next yeah, day or the day before? Of course, of course you can do that because the thing is, it's all about economical, the dish, mm. you know, and whatever we have, you can make it happen with that. And if you have like a turkey or something left over, or is even like a roasted beef, you can make your own jollof rice. You pick up that and you do like the process I do, add it in and then saute it with your tomato paste. And even like we have a jollof rice that is like not that uh, as red, it's like brownish. Okay. And that one we call it, um, it's white jollof rice. And that one is amazing too. Now I can flip the rice. You see the color? And we want it to stick a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a crunch. Is yeah, that, yeah, okay. Yeah. If you think about it, but here I think it's the way I make it is faster. Back home yeah. we make it like. Well, it's on the stove yeah. all day. It's kind of as you're working, you're checking. Yeah, and, and we yeah. and we checking, and then you can go do something else and come back. And uh, I we always say that when you sim when you let the food uh, sim simmer sim simmer sim yeah. simmer simmer when you get. All the flavor is like letting out what they have, and then it's the best way to to do. This is why when I cook for the market, I cook slower to get all the flavor I want to be there. Then when people taste it, it means something to them to remember. You Absolutely, know? like we always say, soup's always better the day the after. The day after, that's right. And yeah. that's the thing when you're cooking, and uh, I say when you let your food sit, and then then you come back to it. This is when you get get, and if you like you guys chef, I know that when you make a, a big piece of nice steak, you're gonna let it like set a bit and then put it and then come back and then you know. Well, that's it. You want all yeah. the the juice, especially the juice, when you're cooking yeah. meat. You want all that juice to distribute back into the meat and let it rest exactly, yeah. or let all these fa flavors marry. So yeah. the jollof rice or anything else, you yeah. want all those flavors to incorporate together, together and, and mingle, yeah. right? And mingle. It's amazing how can I can miss that and then get up and go to the market and pick up and make it. You're absolutely right, yeah. and that is, it's uh, when I miss someone special, yeah. you'll find me cooking that dish. That dish, yeah. 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 And it's all come together right now. Well, that looks like it's ready there for sure. Mm. And now, voila, you have your jollof rice. I don't know, I have a way to, that they teach me back home. It's like I pick up this and I snip it. Okay. And when it's cooked, I will know. You okay, know, so if you can break yeah. it with your finger? Yeah, when I break it in my finger now, I can know that that's cooked. So you could serve it in a dish like this or you could just put that pot right on the table with the chicken on top. Oh yeah, you can, that's just the way we do at home with my family. I just to put everything in the, in the table. This looks like a perfect dish to, uh, to warm your insides, to warm your heart, and to enjoy. Thank you very much, Fatu, for joining me today, sharing a little bit about your story and uh, your lovely uh, jollof rice. Thank you so much for having me, Eve. I appreciate the time and uh, your invitation and hope to do it again.